you look at the example here. Can y'all see that? Yes, sir. All right. It says it there was a, a huge drug bust down in uh, Baldwin County, and it says that uh, 116 pounds of methamphetamine was recovered in Baldwin County traffic stop. So what I want to do with this example is kind of touch on the, the uh, conversions and units and prefixes and all that stuff and significant figures uh, at the same time, right? So first of all, let's take this and let's convert uh, pounds into kilograms because you want to go from the English uh, system to the SI system. So we're going to go from pounds to kilograms. How, do, how can we do that? What do we need in order to do that? A conversion factor? Come on, be a little, you can be a little stronger than that. <laughs> Don't be scared. A conversion factor, you're exactly right. You need a conversion factor. Got to have a conversion factor. All right, so let's go back up here. What are my units for this amount or this number? What are my units? Pounds. Pounds. Good. Pounds. This is my unit. And what does the unit tell me? What is what? What do I use the units for? Anybody remember that? <laughs> your your sound is breaking up. Comparison. Comparison. Good. That's my. That's what I. How I compare this to something else that uh, that measures mass right or weight or which, whichever one we're working with what about this number right here when we talk about a a value right and a unit we talk about a measurement what does that number represent the 116 anybody uh oh sorry i have my unit and I also have another part of, of the measurement that I need, which is what? If I just have the unit and no number, how do I know what I'm measuring? Right, what does that 116 represent? It's the quantity. So the unit helps me to define the quantity and the quantity is attached to the unit. That's how we take measurements. So we got 116 pounds and I wanna convert that into kilograms. So my conversion factor is this. I, if I have one kilogram, that's equivalent to 2.2 pounds. That's my conversion factor. All right, so now we, we know that, let's convert it. So let's take 116 and in my conversion factor, I always set it up the same way. I put my desired unit in the top and I put the unit I wish to discard in the bottom. So here, <laughs> excuse me, I put one kilogram divided by 2.2 pounds. So this is, the kilograms is my desired unit. And then this is my discarded unit. All right, everybody following that so far? Anytime I set up a conversion factor, the, the uh, unit I wanna keep, I put in the top, the unit, I want, the unit I want to get rid of, I put in the bottom. All right. So now can somebody make that quick calculation real quick? So pounds are going to cancel. 
I'll be left with kilograms as my unit, but what is the calculation? <clears throat> I don't all speak out at once. We don't want to break the internet. 0.45 kilograms. Say that again. 0.45 kilograms. Are you sure about that? If we are, okay, so the, the one in divided by 2.2, uh, yes, it's 0.45. Now, more take that and multiply it by 116. My apologies for that. Oh, 73.18. 73.18. Are you sure about that? 73 times 2 would be 146. Did you put 146 in instead of 116? I got 52.72. 52.72, good. All right, so the, the uh, new value is 52.72 kilograms. Now we have another problem. Well, not really a problem. But when we think about sig figs, and we're doing uh, multiplication or division, what's the, does anybody know the rule for significant figures when we're doing multiplication and division? Your answer has to be uh, presented in a certain fashion. Anybody know the rule? Is it in scientific notation? Well, this particular answer, we won't have to use that yet, but we will with some of the other problems, yes. But when you're doing multiplying and dividing with sig figs, right, you keep the lowest, your answer has to, uh, when you present your answer, it has to be presented with the same number of sig figs as the uh, number in the calculation with the lowest number of sig figs. So you keep the lowest number. Keep the lowest number of significant figures. So let's look at the calculation. How many sig figs are in this number right here? 116. Three. Three sig figs, good, excellent. How many sig figs are in this number? 2.2. Two. Two. Two, good. Two. All right, what about the 1.0? One. Actually, it's two. The decimal point makes that zero significant. Remember the other day we were doing the, uh, let me find it. I put it here. It's in another document. Remember, we were doing the Pacific and the Atlantic method Thursday. If if the number has a decimal, then we have to go use the Pacific method. Remember. So the, I, have, I have a I have a quick question. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so, like, if it was another zero beside that zero, it would just be two. It would that number that no no no. Would, the one, any non-zero number is significant. But then the fact that you have a decimal point makes anything after that decimal point significant also. So if you put another zero there, then it would be three sig figs. Okay. Both zeros would be significant. Is that, are you following? Yes, sir. Yeah, so both of these have uh, two sig figs, all right? So now we need our answer to be in two sig figs. Is that right? Because this is a this is a both a multiplication and a division uh, problem, and so we need our answer to be have the lowest number of sig figs. So it needs to be have the same number of sig figs as the number in the calculation with the with the lowest number of sig figs. All right. So we need to get this down to uh, two sig figs. How can I do that? Now, I don't need to use uh, scientific notation in this case, but I, I can get this down to two sig figs by doing what? Rounding the number. I can round it. So the two here is not going to cause the seven to go up. So we can get this to 
52.7. And then that's still three sig figs, but the seven here is gonna cause that two <laughs> to be rounded up. So we can say here that this is 53 kilograms of meth, right? And it's in the proper number of significant figures. Is that okay? Anybody have any questions about that? So what we did was we're looking at units, we're looking at conversions, and we're looking at significant figures at the same time, all with this example. I have a question. Go right ahead. What's the number under 116? Under 116. Like it says, yes. Oh, oh no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just, I was just saying that there's three significant figures. The oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to, I'll do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So the SF is just my little shorthand for uh, significant figures. So, I actually have another question too. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you know, when there's um, a zero in numbers, did you count the zeros or do you? If cross it's, it? You mean if it's sandwiched in? Yes. Like if yeah. it's between two numbers, do you yes. cross out the zeros or? No, they are okay. significant. Okay. We actually, let, let's go to back to our worksheet that we were working on Thursday. And uh, let's look at that because we actually did a, a couple of examples like that. Uh, hold up. Mm -hmm. Stop. We did right here, right? Remember this example we did right here, where you had numbers that were trapped, sandwiched in the two zeros between those significant figures. Those were significant. So that number actually had five significant figures. Would it be different if that would it, if it was a decimal? Yes. If that if it was you mean if it was eighty six point zero zero yes eighty would that would the was, zeros still count or would you yes, cross them out yes because if you had a decimal point anything after the decimal is significant okay so let's look at let's look at D right this is one right right here right even though this is a zero right the fact that it comes after a decimal point we use the Pacific method and and that we come from this side and that first non-zero digit we encounter is a nine and everything after it is significant. All right, did we, did we talk about that yesterday? The Pacific and the Atlantic method uh, during recitation? Yeah, sometimes the zeros confuse me. I don't remember. Yeah, no, it's okay. By all means, ask, ask questions. But when we, we, we talked about this yesterday, uh, right here, let me see if I can zoom in on that. How we how if there's a decimal point, you approach the number from the left, the Pacific method, like the Pacific Ocean over here. And then I, all I mean if is there's no decimal, then you approach it from the right, the Atlantic method. And you look for your first non-zero digit. All right. So here you have a decimal point. So you approach it from there. So everything there is significant. See how it says that that's six sig figs there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then on the other, uh, another example is here, where now this number does not have a <laughs> um, decimal point. It's actually ten thousand one hundred. So when I do the Atlantic method. My arrow, the first non-zero number is that one. So anything after that is significant. So instead of this having five sig figs, it actually only has three. Okay. Yeah, those zeros, we call, we call them trailing zeros. So what if it was a decimal? Would the zeros count as significant figures or would they still If, if that was a decimal here and then- Yes, like after, yes, 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 because then you would approach from this side. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's go back up to the uh, examples. Let's see where we are. Okay, let's do let's do D. What do you think about D? How many sig figs are in D?
Is it four? It's four. Because th again, there's a decimal point. So we approach the number from the left and the first non-zero number we encounter is nine. So everything after that is has to be significant. Not sure why this is doubled up like this. This was doing this earlier. Let's see if we fix it. I'll just erase it and rewrite it. So here, right, this is another example of you. Somebody else was asking about this. So now we have a decimal, and the first non zero number we approach is the eight. So everything after that eight is significant. So this is five significant figures. <clears throat> All right, what about F? What do you think? Two. Two, as a decimal. So we put, we draw an arrow to the first non-zero number. Everything after that is, is significant. So this is two sig figs. What about E? What do you think? There's a decimal point there. And if I drew an arrow, my first, the first non-zero number is the one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So how many total sig figs are listed there? Six. Six. Great. Excellent. All right. So that's six sig figs in that one. All right. Let's let's take this up a step further and let's work through some of these calculations. Right. So let's work through. Uh, actually, we're gonna try to work through all of these. Uh need to edit so I can put space. Give me one second to put some space here. Oh shucks, no mind. I'm gonna screw that up. Because that's gonna get all jumbled up. Let me let's do this. Let's uh let's take this first calculation. All right? 628 times 342 says perform the calculations <coughs> and report with the correct number of significant figures. So what is this number? Somebody calculate that. Stick that in your calculator real quick. And tell me what that number is. Three. Good. Got a problem there, don't we? How many sig figs should that number be reported in? Three. Three sig figs, because the this is a multiplication example. And the number of sig figs in this example in the answer has to match the number of sig figs in the, the lowest number here. And both of these have three. So both of those have three sig figs, so the answer needs to be in three sig figs. How are we going to do that? There, it, there is a way to do it. I heard somebody mention it earlier. Uh, now is your time to shine again. <laughs> how, how scientific you, notation. Scientific notation. Right. My 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 rule of thumb is to start here. Uh, not there. Sorry, here, and move that decimal point over. Like this, two, three, four, five. You move the decimal point over, and your number, your scientific notation number, needs to be greater than one but less than ten. That's why I didn't stop it at after the one. You following? So when I do scientific notation, this number right here. I'm gonna write this down. Right, your number needs to be greater than one and less than 10. So I don't want to put 21 times 10 to the whatever. I want, I'm going to use 2.14776 times 10 to the fifth. All right, are y'all following that? Yes, sir. Okay. So that this number right here, you want it to be again, 
less than 10, greater than one. So you'll never have a double digit number at, there for scientific notation. It'll be one through whatever, one through nine, but it won't be a, a 10 or 11 or a 50 or 21 or 214. You want that number to be uh, greater than one, but less than 10. All right, so this is 2.1, that's still too many digits. So what can I do now to get this down to three sig figs? Can you round it? I can round it, great, excellent. So I'm gonna take this number and because the, these are my, these are gonna be the three numbers I'm working with. And because that set, that four has a seven behind it, the seven is gonna cause that round, that four <laughs> to round up to a five. So now I can write this as 2.15 times 10 to the fifth. And there are no units, it's just a number. So now it's reported in three sig figs. All right, and that is to ensure that the uh, that follow the rules of significant figures for multiplication and division. We we'll say that the answer has to have the same number of sig figs as your lowest number of sig figs in the calculation. All right, so it's two point one five times ten to the fifth. All right, and this is in again scientific notation. That's how we can write numbers with the correct numbers of significant figures without uh, you know, violating some principle of calculations. Because this is, this is, again, in chapter one, there's a whole section on the treatment of calculations. So this is a way to ensure that your calculations are reported with the right number of significant figures. All right, so now when we look at that number, What do you notice about it? Is it, let, let me ask this question. Is that number more or less precise than, than the, uh, the, the, the final answer, 2.15? Is it more or less precise than the original answer? And, and if you answer, whatever, however you answer it, tell me why you say it. Can you repeat that question one more time? Yeah, sure. So the final answer, which is right here, is that more or less precise than this answer right here? All right. It's more precise. So if I if I gave you 2.14776 versus 2.15. Actually, the 2.15 is less precise. The less decimal places you have, the less precise and the more uncertain your number becomes. So let's write that down, right? So this is less precise, All right? Oh, let me fix that. Less decimal places, less precision. Okay, I'll that over. Right, so the less decimal places I take that number out to, <coughs> the less precision I'm working with. The more decimal places, the more precise the number is. All right, can we do the next one? Let's do, uh, let's do B. Somebody tell me, first of all, how many sig figs am I gonna have my answer uh, be in for B? Two. Two sig figs, very good. Who was that? Mary Johnson. Okay, tell me why you say that. I agree, and I, but I just want you to, to spell it off for me. Because um, that's the least. That's the number with the least um, sig figs. It has two. Yeah. So seven point four has two significant figures. Five point six three has three. Can somebody do that calculation? 
because even though the numbers are in scientific notation, we can we know that the two outside of here, the exponent, means that this this decimal place, this decimal is going to move twice, right? We can, so we can write this as also as 563. And then this 7.4 times 10 to the third means that I'm going to move this one, two, three times, sorry. So I can actually write this as 7,400. So what is the product of those two numbers? It should be something in the millions. So I have a question. Four million. Oh, sorry. Okay, we can get the number first and then I'll answer the question. I got 4,100,066. I mean, 100,000. I'm sorry. 4,166,000. Yeah. And then, uh, 200, right? Yes. All right. Go ahead with the question. Okay, so when we're answering these, are we only putting the amount of significant figures or are we putting all the extra work and stuff on there too as the answer? I don't know if that makes sense or not. Mm -hmm. So are you saying, are you showing your work? Well, like for the first one, how we put the three significant on figures and we put the scientific notation mm -hmm. with that, we needed both of those for, the, for A? Yeah, we want to show all of that because all of this is reps, reps and practice. Okay. So the more work you show, the, the more competent you're going to become at doing the calculations. This is all to get it seared in your brain. Like, okay, this is what I need. These are the steps I need to go through. So that if you take, let's say you're taking an exam, your work is done to the side, but you still got to pick the right answer, right? So if you do put the show the work, then you'll know exactly which answer to pick if it's a multiple choice question. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. All right. So. We need to get this in uh, two, as two sig figs. How are we gonna do that? How do we do it the last time? Scientific notation. Scientific notation. So let's write this out in scientific notation as 4.166. Two zero zero. <clears throat> now, if we want this as two significant figures. What what do we have to do now? What's the next step? Because these are my two numbers that I'm I'm going to be working with right here. What do I have to do to that one before I can report it? Round it to four point two round it up right there's a six after the one that's going to cause the one to get rounded up so now this becomes 4.2 times 10 to the sixth right and it's in two significant figures are we okay with that mm -hmm. any questions about it All right, so I want you to work on uh, E and F and D. All right, I want you to work on those on your own over the weekend. Let's go to another sec section. This is what I was trying to avoid, all this stuff getting all jumbled up. I had a quick question. Yeah, sure. What are we supposed to do for C? It's but just see, you know number. what? I think that that is a multiplication problem because I'm not certain how that's reported. So I think that the dot in between, the dots in between are indicated to, to multiply the three numbers together. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to uh, here. Perfect, number 11. Right, it says <clears throat> the label on a soft drink bottle gives the volume in two units, and it's, 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 it gives us the volume as liters and fluid ounces. Whenever you see something like that, this is again 
if, if both numbers are, you can look on, if you have a soda next to you right now or juice or whatever, if it's given the um, amount in that bottle in two different, unit, two different units, then that means that those units are equivalent, right? So for the conversion phase, asking us to develop a conversion factor and then develop that with a specific number of sig figs. <laughs> so let's do that and let's see what we get. So what would the conversion factor look like? If both of those numbers are equivalent, which number would I put on top? Which one would I put on the bottom? Or would it matter? Right? It, it really wouldn't matter un unless I'm trying to use it to convert one to the other. So let's put the 67.6 in the top. So 67.6 fluid ounces divided by two liters, right? That is my conversion factor. So if I wanted to go between liters and fluid ounces, I would use this conversion factor. And I can simplify it down as well, right? So how would you simplify that? Would you simply divide by two? Yes, no, maybe. Somebody put that into the calculator. Divide 67.6 by two. Tell me what you get. 33.8. Okay, so 33.8. Three point eight fluid ounces for every one liter. All right, now I need to figure out, now I need to answer the other part of that question, which asks, how many sig figs can you justify in your conversion factor? What type of operation is this? Is it adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Division. It's division. All right. So if, if I'm dividing that, right, that's going to follow the rules that say that I need to keep the uh my conversion factor needs to be represented in the lowest number of sig figs. Is that right? So of those two numbers, which one has the lowest number? The 1.0. 1.0, okay, good. So that's two sig figs. So if I write this out, let me just write it out. Um, I'll put it over here. So 33.8, we'll take the one out. Fluid ounces per liter. How do I express 33.8 and two sig figs? What do I need to do? Because right now I have three, is that right? Yeah, you'd round the point eight, and that would be 34 fluid ounces per liter. 34 fluid ounces per liter. Good, right? Because again, when, you, when you're doing a multiplying or dividing, you have to keep the lowest number of seed figs. All right, let's go to here, and let's start looking at some of these conversions between SI units. And let's keep in mind our um, significant figures uh, and let's keep that in mind, like when we're doing these calculations, we also want to keep in mind that we want to keep the significant figures. Um, we want to report our answers with the right number of sig figs. All right, so let me put some room down here so we can have some space to work. All right. So let's, st let's start at the top. We're gonna do um, 
this calculation right here that calls for us to convert grams into milligrams. As a rule of thumb, if I start with a larger unit and go to a smaller unit, I am going to get a bigger number. What does the M in milligrams mean? What prefix is that? Anybody? What does that M mean in front of the grams? It's a, it's a numerical quantity. We know it's milli as the prefix, but what does it mean numerically? If you have to go back to that chart from uh, Thursday, do so. Is it a million grams? It's not a million. That's micro. It's one thousandth. One thousandth. Yeah, thousandth T eight with a TH on the end. So it's it's a milligram is one thousand of a gram, right? So if I were to compare a gram to a milligram, I would say that one gram is 1,000 milligrams. That is my conversion factor. So let's do that. So let's take 612 grams times 1,000 milligram, <coughs> milligram, sorry over one gram. Everybody following that, anybody not see that? Anytime I'm converting between units, I'm using those numerical values. And again, if I go from a bigger unit, which is a gram to a smaller unit, like a milligram, my, my milligrams are gonna be bigger, more. All right, um, so where did the one come from? The one you mean right here? Yes. So that's so if I if I report my units, I'm always reporting as a in a in a, as a factor of one, right? So yes, if I, if I know what a milligram is. I know a milligram is one thousandth of one gram. So one gram is going to give me one thousand milligrams. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. 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 Good question. Uh, so now, again, when I'm doing my conversions. What am I doing? I want, what do I want in the bottom? What do we call this again? Discarded unit. I'm gonna get rid of that. And this is the desired unit. So I'm gonna cancel grams. I'm gonna be left with milligrams. What's the number? What do I get? 612,000. 612,000. All right. Problem. What's the problem? How many sig figs uh, should this be in? Yeah, put in scientific notation. Mm -hmm. I, need, so I need to use scientific notation because how many sig figs? Let me, let, me, let me fix this too because I don't want to. We're going to make that 1.0 and not just one, not an exact number. All right, how many, how many sig figs am I reporting? Out of all three of these numbers, which one has the lowest number of sig figs? Is it this one? Then I have two. This has three. And this has one. So which one is the lowest? Because that 1,000, remember, if we look at that like this, and we use the Atlantic method because there's no decimal point, those trailing zeros are not significant. So we'll say that this has one CP. Is that OK? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So now what do we need to do? Let's, let's work it step by step. First, we need to put it in scientific notation. So we're gonna move the decimal point one, two, three, four, five times. Come on, Pen. sorry. One, two, three, four, five. 
right? So that becomes 6.12 times what? 10 to the fifth. Uh -huh. That's still three sig figs. We got to get it down to one. Would the two cause the one to round up or stay the same? Stay the same. It's going to be the same, right? So this is here. So that's 6.1 times 10 to the fifth. Now, would, would the one cause the six to round up or stay the same? Stay the same. Stay the same. So now it is to get this reported in once with one C big is six times 10 to the fifth. Very different from the original number when you think about it. I think about it this way. If I owed you $612,000 and I gave you this number, how much, what does that number represent? 600,000. 600,000. So I have shorted you by 12. That's what I mean by how precise the number is. I've shorted you 12 grand. And in some cases, depending on what I owe you that money for, that may, that may mean my life. <laughs> so again, the less decimal places, the less places after the original digit, the, the more imprecise the number gets. All right. This is good. Let's do another one. Uh, which one do y'all want to do? I'll let you pick. It's Friday. Um, can we do H? H? Man, yes. come on. Yes. I, I, we can do it. I didn't mean to strike through it, though. Hold up. Let me fix that. There we go. All right. So we're going to do H, which asks us to convert from kilometers or kilometers down to meters. Here's the thing. We're going from a big, now we're going from a bigger unit to a smaller unit. So what would you expect for that number? You Would you expect it to be go up or go down? If I'm going from kilometers, which is big, that's a thousand, to meters, which would be one thousandth of a kilometer, I would expect that number to go up big. or go down. It should get, it, it should get bigger, shouldn't it? So I'm going from a big unit to a small unit. So anytime I go from, let me write that out, write it down here. So I'm going from a bigger unit to a smaller unit. The value goes up. If I go from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, the value should go down. All right. That's just a rule of thumb. So if I'm going from kilometers to meters, <coughs> I should get more meters. So let's do it. Let's convert it. So for H, I have 1,738 kilometers. And then my conversion factor is there are 1,000 meters in every one kilometer or kilometer, all right? So my, and, and my lowest number of seed figs in this case is what? Is that 1,000? Is that how many seed figs are in that number? One. One significant figure. So that's my lowest. So can somebody do that calculation? It's 1,738 times 1,000. And give me the exact number. Uh, 1,738,000. Great. Now we need to do what with that? because we're trying to get it to one sig fig. We got to put it in scientific notation, is that right? Yes. So this is going to be what? 1.7 times 10, I'm sorry. Let me, I'm gonna keep the three and the eight. 
1.738 times 10 to the sixth. Is that, is that ready? That's not ready, is it? No, I got a round. I need a round. So the eight is going to push the three up to a four. The four is not going to cause the seven to go up. So I can take that seven and use it to round up that one to a two. So now this is two times 10 to the sixth meters. Mm -hmm. So 1,738 kilometers is roughly 2 million meters. That, that's what that's saying, because it's 1,000 meters in every kilometer. All right, but we know that that number is imprecise and has some uncertainty because it's only uh, reported with one sig fig. All right, are we okay? Everybody good? Yes. All right. So Brent, keep this sheet, bring it on Monday. We're going to keep walking through it so we can finish up this chapter. And then after that, we're going to start uh, talking about atoms and elements.